What if I told you you can host your own remote desktop software for free in your home lab? Well, stick around. I'm going to show you how. Let's get into it. Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Havoc. Today, we are going to install Rust Desk. Now, Rust Desk is a remote desktop software that you can host in your home lab. We are going to do this on Docker. So you want to make sure you have Docker installed on your home lab and we're going to use Portainer a little bit as well. Before we do that, let's take a look at Rust Desk itself and see what it's all about. Here we are over on the Rust Desk website, rustdesk.com. You can see it's a fast open source remote access and support software. This is really great for controlling multiple PCs within your network. It also works with your phone. So there's an app for both Android and iOS. What that's gonna allow you to do is you can install the client on your phone and be able to access your remote computers via the Rust Desk app. So it'd be like you're just sitting on your computer, but you're doing it via your phone. I use this quite a bit for remote desktoping into both my streaming computer and my Windows computer that I host my Twitch chatbot on. And it works really great for me just to remote into those because they are headless. I got no monitor, no keyboard, no mouse set up on them. I just fire up Rust Desk and connect right into them and it works perfect. It's, it's an amazing piece of software. It's also great for remote support. I use it with my grandparents able to remote into their computer and help them out with anything they need. So make sure you are at the rustdesk.com webpage. We will visit this in a little bit for downloading some software, but first let's take a look at their documentation for Docker installation. Here we are at their Kind of documentation help website on the left side under installation we want docker if you're going to do windows or something else you can obviously click any of that they have stuff for running the server on your synology nas but like i said we're going to do this on docker and they were nice enough to give us some few commands here so if you didn't want to change anything you can literally just run these three commands and it'll install everything for you. We're going to do a Docker Compose. So we're going to take a look at this, go through it and set it up the way we want it. And I'm going to do this bottom one here that has the always use relay equals to Y. Um, it says if you need to make config changes, set the always use relay to Y. That way you can use environmental variables in your Docker Compose. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. So on the right side, you'll click copy to clipboard. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it into like notepad so we can go through and take a look at the settings. Here we are in notepad and you can see it's your typical Docker compose file. So we have services and then it's going to do two different containers. And the first container, the HBBS, that is the ID container. And it doesn't have a great name because you can see the container name is HBBS. And eventually you're gonna be like, what the heck is that? So I'm gonna change this to Rust Desk dash ID because this be the ID server. Down here, HBBR, this is the relay server. So I'll change this to Rust Desk dash relay. And that's just naming them so we know what they are. Um, when we're looking at our Docker containers in Portainer. I'm gonna leave the rest of the settings just how they are. If there's anything you need to change, go ahead and make those changes now. What we'll do next is we will connect to our server via our SSH terminal. We'll paste this in and we'll get installing. I've logged in to my server, my main server I call Thor. You'll log into you know, your server via your terminal. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put all my stuff. I have a folder called applications. Let me just make sure LS we have applications. So we'll CD into that. And then I'm going to make a folder called rust desk. And that's where I want to put this Docker compose. Oh, I forgot to do sudo. There we go. And then we'll CD into our Rust Desk server. If you hit tab, it'll auto change it or auto type it all for you. And here is where we want to make our Docker compose. So I'm gonna go sudo nano, and then we'll do compose.yaml. And we're gonna copy all that stuff that we just did in the notepad file. 
and we're going to paste it in here. So you can see here is everything we have. We're calling it Rust Desk ID, um, Rust Desk Relay. Perfect. That's what we want. So we're going to go ahead and save that. So I'll do Control X. Do you want to save it? Yes. And then file name to write. There we go. If we do LS, we have our Docker Compose file. Now we need to run it. So we'll go sudo docker compose up dash D running and it's pulling both of those applications and it is done. That was a quick install, a quick pull there. So let's get over to our server, log into Portainer and see if our Rust desk servers are up and running. Here we are at my Thor server. I'm logged into Portainer. We'll go ahead and click on containers here. And you can see right here, we have our Rust Desk Relay and our Rust Desk ID server. So both those servers are installed and running. The next thing we need to do is download the client and install it on our computers. We're gonna head back over to rustdesk.com and get downloading. On the Rust Desk website, we'll click download and you'll choose your version here. So we have a lot of different options and whatever version of the software you know you need, download that um, specifically for your operating system. They make it really easy um, up here at the top options. And something to note, they have this across the website is if you're on the phone with somebody and they're asking you to download Rust Desk, just do not do it. Unless like your family or whatever, right? Um, as people probably trying to scam and get your information. I had this problem quite a few years ago um, with TeamViewer and somebody like got a hold of the ID I was using and was able to remote in. It was in the middle of a stream. It was actually kind of interesting, but luckily I was able just to kill that session and got everything taken care of. So, you know, make sure you're careful out there when you're, you know, using remote desktop software. So for me, I'm using Windows across the board. You can also go to, you know, the Android store you see here for Android, and then you have the iOS and the app store. So for me, I'm gonna download the executable. Go ahead and download your version and install it. Now that we have the Rust Desk application installed and running, it's time to set up the connection. To give you a quick brief rundown of the client here, you can see it does say ID and below that is the ID for your computer that is randomly generated when you install the application and it's specific to your machine. If you want to do a one-time password, like somebody is going to connect to your computer that you're gonna allow it, you can type one in there. But you see at the bottom, it says ready for a faster connection. Please set up your own server. And that's what we're going to do. So what you'll do is up next to your ID, we'll click the three dots, go down to network, unlock network settings. You'll click ID and relay server. And here is where you're going to type in the IP address to the server that you just installed the Rust desk stuff to. So for me, it's 192.168.50.15 and the same thing for Relay, 192.168.50.15. There's one more thing we need to do is we need to do a key and the key is the encryption. So we need to go back to our server and find out what the key is. So go ahead and SSH back into your server, come on back and I'll show you how we get that key. So I'm SSH into my server. I'm in the Rust desk. We'll do our LS to see what is in this directory. And what we have is a bunch of different files. What we're going after is the public key, which is this ID ed25519.pub. So go ahead and open that up. So we'll go nano id underscore ed.pub. And you can see this gives you your encryption key. So copy that long string of characters and we're gonna go back to the Rust Desk client and we'll paste those numbers into there. So back here, Rust Desk client, we have key. We'll paste the key in there and then we'll click okay. And what that does is it creates a secure encrypted connection between our client and our server. So next up, we'll go back here to home and you can see we have nothing to remote desktop into. So go ahead and install the client on your phone or another computer and go through that exact same setup. Type in the IP address to your server. So we'll go settings and then network ID and relay type in the ID server. 
the relay server and the key. Once you do that, go ahead and come on back and I'll show you how we can connect to that machine. Now that you have the client set up on a remote machine, what you want to do is look at what the ID is on that remote machine. And you're going to paste that in the control remote desktop, enter remote ID. So I'm going to paste mine in there and then we'll click connect. And mine is going to pop up asking for a password. And there's a reason for that. What I did is I went and password protected this, you know, whole connection. And let me show you where you do that real quick. So under your settings, you'll go down to security, unlock security settings, and then scroll down to a password. And you can here, you can set a permanent password and, or you can set a one-time use password. So I set a permanent one. And what that does is it forces, you know, the connection when you're connecting to it to prompt you for a password. So it's an extra layer of security. So you could do that if you want. So go ahead and you'll connect to your device. You'll type in whatever your password is, and then you'll click okay. And boom, we are now connected into our other machine. So this is my machine that runs my streamer bot for um, my Twitch channel, this is actually a, uh, windows 10 VM on Proxmox and I'm using rust desk to connect into it all on my network. Everything is encrypted. So this is a really great application to remote into different machines. Like I said earlier, I do this on my streaming computer as well. It allows me to easily remote into that without having to have a keyboard, a mouse, uh, monitors, etc., hooked up to the streaming computer. It's all just done remotely with a single keyboard and mouse. So this is a really, really powerful program. And like I said earlier, what's amazing about it is it's all self-hosted within your network and encrypted. So if you take your phone, for example, and you're out and about and you're thinking, hey, I really need to log into my network, my computer, and grab a file off of it. Well, you can do that. However, the problem is since this is all hosted on your internal network, you're not going to be able to do that without like a VPN connection. So you'll want to set up some sort of VPN connection from your phone. So it connects to your network and then you can do that. It's all secure. There are ways that you can allow these ports through your firewall. I wouldn't suggest doing that unless you really know what you're doing. And there's some documentation on how to do that. Something to think about. I have another video that goes over tail scale. And it's a real easy way to set up a VPN into your home and you can install the client like on your phone and then you can use Rust Desk to remote desktop into any of your computers. So that's going to do it. That's how you install Rust Desk server in a Docker container and install and set the clients on your internal network. Super powerful program. It is open source. So definitely take a look at this. It's really easy to use. And if you do this, let me know down in the comments how it's working out for you. Until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep doing good. <laughs>